All right, so this is a Tenma 72-455. It's a um, audio generator. Actually, generates uh, it's a signal generator more than an audio. It generates signals from about eight and a half hertz up to about uh, uh, 1.1 megahertz, rated at 10 to one, 10 hertz to one megahertz. Um, but I've got it hooked up right now um, to a frequency counter. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the uh, the bands. We're going to set this thing at mid scale. And as we change the ranges, we're going to see just how close we hit uh, to mid band for uh, for that range. Kind of an idea. It gives you an idea of uh, how decent the um, calibration is on the vernier. So let's try it here. We'll go to times one. Uh, so we're at roughly 50 and uh, that would be 50 hertz and we are getting 50, 51 hertz right now. Now without touching the setting let's go to times 10 range. We should now be about 500 hertz. All right, without touching the setting again, we'll go times 100. Uh, in this case, we should be about 5,000. 5.011 kilohertz, 5,000 and 11 hertz. All right, not touching anything again, go times 1,000, this should be 50,000. All right, we got 50,178. And finally, times 10,000. This should give us uh, 500,000 hertz. And we have 509,000. So the vernier is set very close, at least on mid-band, mid-range, for the all of the scale. Now, just for kicks, let's try going up to 100. This should be uh, a megahertz. Let's see how we sh shake out up here. 984 kilohertz. All right, let's just see how close we have to go to get a megahertz. That's very close. And there's the difference on the dial. So we went from 100 to well, just slightly past it, maybe 102 on the dial. Very close. So the vernier is calibrated well. It's a good sign of a of a decent piece of equipment when you're able to dial in whatever you want, and uh, what the readings show you is what you're getting. Well, I decided to give you a look at the interior of this Tenma. It's interesting. Uh, some actually uh, some pretty nice uh, workmanship on it. Maybe not the level of a, an Agilent HP, but then this was never uh, never priced in that same range either. However, I think it's interesting. We have a uh, a nice little plexiglass mounting plate here that. Uh, that holds the gear assembly for the geared drive. That's a geared drive with a, uh, a three element um, uh, capacitor. Switch assembly. That would be your main board there for the oscillator. Power supply. Back side, nice and clean. Nothing uh, unusual, no burnt looks, anything like that. And uh, the unit works well, so I think we can conclude from that that we're in good shape. So there you have a little tour. Um, we're going to switch now to the oscilloscope. And we're going to take a look. Take a look at the waveform. 
All right, so now we are going to run at the lowest frequency. This is about eight and a half hertz as I measured on the um, on the frequency meter. And I'm going to slowly now turn this up until I hit the end of the band. Your job, as I turn this uh, up, the vernier, your job is to watch that uh, frequency display and just look for any abnormalities. Okay, here we go. There's half. There's maximum. All right, we're going to go to range two. We'll change our uh, range switch here so we get a much better. There we go. And we should be running from approximately 100 hertz. And here I go increasing the frequency. There's maximum. All right, let's go back to change the range. We're doing times 100 now. We should now be running 1,000 hertz. And let's um, turn up the frequency. There's half. There's maximum. Times a thousand. All right, here we go. There's half. maximum. All right, we are on uh, times 10,000, so now we're running 100 kilohertz and we're increasing the frequency. There's 500,000, that's halfway. There's a million. There's a million, 108,000. So we've gone through the entire uh, set of ranges, all frequencies, uh, using sine waves. I was on a minus 10 dB, I could have been on maximum, I could have been minimum. If I turn down my dB switch, and we can increase the the uh, sensitivity there and you can see the waveform. You'll also see it picking up a little more noise because then the noise becomes as, uh, as strong as the signal. There we go. Alright, now let's take a look at the um, square wave. our square wave. I'm going to turn the frequency up. That's from our minimum. About eight and a half. Frequency is going up. Let's uh, expand the scale. Sorry. Frequency is going up. There's mid band. Maximum. Okay. This is times 10, so we're at 100. And let's uh, increase our range. Here we go. Raising the frequency. There's halfway. Full. We're on times 100. This would put us at 1,000 hertz, and we are going to increase frequency. Halfway. Maximum. OK. 
Okay, we are on times a thousand, so this would be starting out at ten thousand. And let's uh, increase our frequency in the range setting. Okay, frequency is being increased now. Halfway. Maximum. And then the final setting times 10,000. So we are starting out at 100,000 and increasing frequency. Well, we're going to keep forgetting to change the range. Here we go. Increasing frequency. Halfway. There we are at 1,108,000. This would be a million here. 1,108,000. So there you have it. The unit is in fine shape. Um, as you can see, very clean. Looks brand new, case-wise. Part of the reason for that is I gave it a very nice paint job. And decent looking from the front. Minor problem here and there. I mean, we have a little, a small split in the corner here. Looks like somebody dinged it. A um, little surface scratch on the knob. Nothing uh, objectionable. Actually looks very, very nice. Got to make somebody a very nice uh, oscillator. We have a, a working handle. And then finally on the back, external sink input, fuse, power. So there you have it.